will see the Raymond tree algorithm for parallel and distributed systems. Raymond tree algorithm is a token based algorithm which is used for a unique token which is shared among all the sites. A site is allowed to enter its critical state if it possesses that token. So Raymond tree is a token based algorithm for mutual exclusion. Now let's see how the Raymond tree algorithm actually works. The sites are arranged in a logical directed tree. Root is where the token is held. So root is known as a token holder initially and all the edges that are directed towards the root and every site has a variable holder that points to an immediate neighbor node on a directed path towards the root. Root's holder points to itself that is if it is not pointing to itself then also by default it is the holder which points to itself and all other nodes and edges are pointing towards the root as an initial path of the Raymond tree algorithm. The Raymond tree follows three major steps. It is requesting the CS. CS stands for critical state. Executing the CS and releasing the CS. Now these are the three important steps that Raymond tree follows. Now let's see how it works. Requesting the CS that is requesting the critical state. If SI that is a site that does not hold the token and request for the critical state that it, it needs to enter the critical state it sends a request upwards provided its request underscore Q is empty which stands for Q. The data structure followed for the Raymond tree is a Q which follows first in first out logic. It then adds its request to the request Q. Request Q is a data structure which is followed. Non-empty request queue adds up the request message at the top of the queue. Site on the path to root receiving request propagates it up that is if a root at a lower level requests for the token then the message is passed. If we take an example if this is my node and this is how my tree is formed And if my this node is requesting for a critical state token, then the message will be sent as it is pointing upwards to its parent node on top. And the request by this node will be added to the request queue. Root on receiving the request, this is one path, root on receiving the request will send it to the site that forwarded the message and set the holder to the forwarding site. So if this node has sent a notice or send a request for the token then it will be saved over here if this root has the token then it will release it if it is done else it will pass on the message to the upper node which holds the token any SI receiving token SI stands for the site which is requesting for the token deletes the top entry from the request queue and sends the token to the site that is as it keeps on adding the tokens and if it is releasing the token then the first node which has asked for it will be given the particular token. Set the holder to point to it. If request queue is not empty then send the request message to the holder site that is if this queue of sending the request is not empty then it will keep on holding till the root which is having the token releases it. This is the procedure for requesting the critical state that is if a site or a node wants to enter its critical state it first need to have a token as this is a token based algorithm. Now executing the CS getting the token with the site at the top of the request queue once the token is released then it will be deleted the request will be deleted from the first in first out queue and delete of the of the request queue and then it enters the critical state. Once it has entered the critical state then it has to release the critical state so that the token can be handed over to the other side which is requesting for it. If the request queue is non-empty 
delete top entry from the queue send the token to the site set holder to that site we will see in the actual example how this particular thing works that is if my this particular node had the key had the token and someone else is requesting as it has released the token so the arrows to that particular site will change this had asked for the token so it has got the token it will see if it is non empty then whichever site has asked for the token and this particular site is done with it then it will release the token for that particular site if the request queue is non empty send the request message to the holder site if it is non empty and suppose this is asked for it so it will send the token first to the parent node and from the parent node it will be sent to the site node this is how the raymond tree algorithm using the request executing and the releasing of critical state works this is how the raymond tree looks like you will see this is the root node which is shown with a highlighted color and all other nodes are pointing towards the root node which helds the token now let's see the example of to raymond tree how it actually works on the request execution and release P zero. This is the state. Is the current node that holds the token, and all the other nodes are pointing towards it. You will see it over here. Now we say that P three wants the token to get into the critical state. Now P three is requesting for the token, so P three is added to the FIFO queue, and request message is sent to its parent P two. This is the step which will be happening and in the requesting of critical state. So P three wants the token, but the token is held by P zero. So P three is added in the queue, and the request message is sent to its parent P two because P two is the parent of P three, and P two receives the request from P three. P three is added to the FIFO queue of P two, and the request message is sent to the parent P one as P two is not holding the token. Now P one receives the request from P three. as from p3 to p2 to p1 p3 is added to the fifo queue of p1 and the request message is sent to p0 which is holding the token you will see that all the arrows will remain the same in this condition now what happens p0 has received the request so this person has received the request from p3 to through p1 that is from p3 to p2 to p1 and now p0 it surrenders the token and passes it to p1 as the work of p0 is done so it surrenders this token and it is passed to p1 because p1 is the one which was requesting for the token to be given to p3 and the arrow is changed over here you will see it also changes the direction and makes p1 the root temporarily so p1 becomes now the temporary root Now P two moves the first element from the queue to see which node requested the token. Token was requested by P three. P two surrenders the token and passes it to P three. From P one it comes to P two, and from P two it comes to P three. Now P three completes the critical state. It has completed whatever it has requested for. It has asked, and it has completed the critical state. It checks. the fifo queue for the request of the token if any other node over here or any other site over here has requested if not it holds it with itself till it is demanded by any other process so at present p3 becomes the root node as it is holding the token and now it is waiting for all this process when p0 to p1 to p2 it was the executing state and when it comes to p3 now it is the releasing state from the critical state but p3 will be held in this position till someone else demands for the critical state that it wants to enter if suppose p2 asks for the critical state token or the token then p3 will release it and p2 will be given the token and this is how the raymond tree actually works for the token based algorithm thank you